Hello everyone and welcome to another news coolum video, another plug side chat. So I've been talking a bit about DC fast chargers, you know, what their real purpose is, why we should maybe use caution, uh, overextending ourselves in building public DC fast chargers, maybe some cheaper alternatives uh, to public fast chargers. I feel like there's a missed opportunity if we wanted to we could make it so that every new electric vehicle that hits the road is a dc fast charger and that's something that's unique to electric vehicles you can't really do that in any other way when you look at the ccs charge ports when you look at the chatamo charge ports or even the tesla proprietary uh, charging format most of them should be able to support vehicle to grid power transfers. So essentially you're feeding power back into the grid. If you can do that, you can also do vehicle to vehicle power transfers. So essentially what it would be is a cable with a control uh, and maybe a protocol transmitter, depending on how you wanted to set it up because you could set up a pedestal, uh, you could set up a mobile device, you could actually simply allow uh, a CCS to CCS plug or a CCS to Chatamo plug or a Tesla to CCS or vice versa. So essentially what happens is somebody needs a fast charge and I'm not using 30 kilowatt hours of my 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. I know I don't need it. Uh, I make my car available for that exchange and someone comes in, plugs their car into my car. It's authorized and my car transfers 30 kilowatt hours of energy from my battery to their battery. And it makes sense when you think about it because a lot of people don't use the full capacity of their battery. It's a way of generating income from your electric vehicle. There are some really interesting things that you can do if you look at how Audi and Porsche are setting up their vehicles. They have two charge ports. They have a CCS charge port on the driver's side front, but then they have a standard uh, level two AC on the passenger side front. It wouldn't be that difficult to set that system up so that your car is plugged in at a level two, staying charged. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe you don't need it for days or possibly weeks at a time. You make it available so that people can come up, park next to your car, plug in, DC fast charge while you're hooked up to a level two charger. And essentially what you've done is you've created a mobile DC fast charger that is parked and recharging and refilling. It's essentially a grid tied battery DC fast charger that happens to also be a car. So there's really no need for this additional investment in infrastructure if you're able to have cars with excess or surplus battery capacity available at certain locations. Even businesses with level two chargers, or if I'm staying several nights at a motel that has a destination charger, well, I can just set my car to being on and I'm passing through essentially the electricity from a level two charger that's constantly charging my car while I'm parked at whatever location I'm parked at and people who are traveling can then rely on it. And obviously as the owner of the vehicle, I could set the terms for how this works and I can shut off access if I know I'm going to need to leave in a few hours, whatever the case may be. People keep talking about how we need to build out, you know, DC fast charging, public DC fast charging to match the number of gas stations. Well, if you look at it that way, if you look at it, how each new electric vehicle is itself a DC fast charger or could be, 
and all you really need is a cable connect and the vehicle should be able to give as good as they get, well then that really alleviates a huge amount of public charging infrastructure that we would need to build. Because as long as you're staying local, your larger battery electric vehicle could serve as a refueling point for travelers and smaller battery electric vehicles. You know, there would be no, no reason to build out a, a super extensive public charging network uh, beyond maybe just the most basic uh, necessities. So I think it's worth considering and I think it's a good option, right? And a lot of us have multiple vehicles we're not going to necessarily be driving them both at the same time. I know autonomous vehicles might have a, a, an impact on this as well, but autonomous driving is still probably not going to represent a majority of electric vehicles for years and years to come. Uh, it's price prohibitive, and uh, a, a lot of people still just don't trust the technology or they would just rather drive themselves. Anyway, I would love to hear what you think about this. Do you think that vehicle to vehicle DC charging is something that we should invest in? Is it something that automakers should consider? Are the dual ports that Audi and Porsche using good enough to possibly enable a grid tied battery DC fast charger equivalent that is actually your car? I don't know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out. And uh, thank you for watching.